probability and stats. So how are we going to rate measure of central tendencies and dispersions? Easy. I agree, right? Uh, you have mean, mode, median, a few curveballs in there, right? You have a bimodal, trimodal, multimodal, right? Median, if you have even numbers, how you calculate the median, right? In terms of averages, you can have weighted averages, right? Which one is mostly influenced by the outliers? So mean is mostly influenced by the outliers and all of that stuff that we've discussed, right? This is not a technical session. I have to hold myself back, you know, throughout this session, uh, not to go in any technical details. Otherwise, you won't be able to complete this, right? Um, so... In terms of probability uh, distribution, when we're talking about uh, probability and stats, how would you guys rate this? And just a quick reminder, this includes normal distribution, your Bayes theorem, your binomial distribution. So this, I would say it's medium, right? All of that stuff, probability, laws of probability, joint probability. For some of you, it might even be hard, right? So just make sure that you put in the time and effort. It's not, it's not super easy, but it's not super difficult. Expected value and decision-making. We did a couple of problems. This is fairly easy, right? Let's multiply the probabilities with the outcome and sum them up and you get the expected value. So how are we going to tackle this section? If you guys remember, we did one and a half sections, one and a half sessions on probability. And uh, we got to respect the sections that are difficult right? Which sections are difficult? We have the Bayes theorem, which is a pain in the neck. Normal distribution, the f of x and the r of x, that can get tricky, but I think we spend a lot of time understanding the graph. No matter how a question is asked, I think that if you paid attention and worked through it, you should be comfortable in dealing with those type of problems. Binomial, it's sort of a word problem type of stuff, at least at most, you know, um, that in between so we got to be careful with how we are capturing all of that stuff. Other than that, bi uh, binomial is pretty easy. Prob uh, I was going to say um, permutation combination also, you know, order does matter, order doesn't matter, that type of stuff, okay? So for the most part, it's easy. Psychologically, this is also an important section because right up front, the, the one area which actually, I would say the laws of probability can still be tricky, right? And for that, if you remember, when we're going through the live training session, I spent extra time explaining you guys what are mutually exclusive events with the help of Venn diagrams, right? And what are independent events, right? Because independent and mutually exclusive and the overlap with the Venn diagram and the second law of probability, the third law of probability, which then leads us into Bayes theorem, like that is sort of an area where you have to be super careful. And that sort of re revolves around Bayes theorem. Those problems are one line, two line problems, right? But whether you're multiplying the probabilities, whether you're adding the probabilities, right? How you deal with that. So you got to be a little bit careful and we did several practice problems, okay? So I would say stay calm and collected. There's good use of calculator to be had in this section, especially with permutation, with combination, right? Binomial is all about that. Um, for Bayes theorem, we've discussed the mechanical approach, right? Just make sure that you go through the three, four steps that we discussed for Bayes theorem. For normal distribution, make sure that you're able to understand the, the Gaussian curve, right? And use R of X and F of X um, properly. So I think that we should be fairly fairly good. Psychologically, I was saying that this is an important section because combined with math, it's one of those things that is going to show up early. So if you are able to get, you know, uh, you know, out of 10, all the nine problems are front correct. I mean, you're setting yourself up for success, right? So just, just be mindful of that. Ethics, professional practice and safety. So code of ethics, how are we going to rate it? Remember, this is not just your model rule, right? This is also scenario based problems, right? It is almost a test of your reading comprehension, right? So I would say, don't read too much into the scenarios, okay? Try and link the scenarios with what's the crux of the issue? Is it a confidentiality issue? Is it a conflict of interest? It is, uh, whether it's an issue with safety, public responsibility is an, uh, so you got to qualify that question with like, what is the overarching theme in the problem, right? Are you hiding something, right? Are you being malicious towards other PE, right? So, so once you get an overarching theme, then you can ignore some of the stuff that is sort of taking you in different directions, right? And we spent, we did a lot of these scenarios and uh, in the study guide, there's several scenarios as well. So hopefully that will be helpful. So let's mark it as easy, knowing that you need to be super careful in reading the problem carefully and interpreting it carefully. IP, intellectual property. How are you guys going to rate it? It is easy, right? Nothing difficult here. Safety is easy. 
although we did the uh, noise pollution, those type of problems there, right? Logarithm and a couple of steps that you need to be a little bit careful, but overall electrical safety is pretty simple. The threshold of the uh, perception of current one milliamp, you know, the let go current six milliamps, um, uh, ventricular fibrillation is whatever, 20, 40 milliamps. It's all given in the handbook. Why is grounding important, right? We also spoke a little bit about top. Uh, about uh, arc fat. Okay. How can we tackle the section? I would say code of ethics. Um, just read through the problem carefully. Don't get swayed in different directions. Try and get to the crux of the issue. Like what is that main concept? And then go back to the model rules and then work through that systematically. IP as well, fairly simple, straightforward. Understand what the copyright protection is for. Like this is copyrighted material. For example, what is a patent? What is a um, you know, trade secret? And in what scenario we... And we should use one.